Today we're going to be talking about something that I personally don't have any experience with, but these two girls do. Very touchy, probably, subject. Mm -hmm. um, so let's just go right into it. You both have experienced miscarriages, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So, Kristen, why don't you start and just like tell us your experience? Yeah, I feel like it will definitely be a conversation because there's like... I should probably face you a little bit more. <laughs> face me. Let's get romantical. Yes. I know. Um, I feel yeah. like enough people just don't talk about it. Yeah, it's definitely like taboo. Like a lot of people don't talk about it. I actually have a video um, here on my channel, if you're watching on YouTube, um, about my entire experience that I kind of go more into depth and whatnot. But yeah, it was like, I don't know. I just kind of felt like something was off, first of all. I think I was like six weeks when it stopped progressing. Mm -hmm. And I... When I ended up at this like random place that was kind of like the Planned Parenthood of um, of like San Clemente, which I didn't wasn't aware, mm -hmm. and they just started asking me all these like weird questions, like it, not weird for s certain situations, but I expected to walk in there and be like, oh my gosh, you're having a baby, like mm -hmm. with you and your boyfriend, like congrats. And I walked in and it was like, is this baby like because of rape or you know they asked me all these really really personal questions and I was just like, what? the hell is going on and then they the the chick was like really seemed super like inexperienced I think I told you that mm -hmm. and she like was like had to call someone else in to like look after they you know because they do okay so if you guys don't know and even I didn't know I was googling I was like what do you do when you find out when you're pre pregnant I'm like mm -hmm. where do you go do I go to an OBGYN um you know what do you do so your first thing is like a prenatal appointment and um they, you have to be like eight weeks, right? Yeah, go. they usually, like, they'll ask you, they'll have you talk to a nurse and, like, ask you, you know, when was... The last, yeah, first the, day of your last menstrual yes, cycle. Yes, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. totally. And You're then like, they tell you to wait. Uh huh. Yeah, they want you to wait, which is, like, the Nobody hardest does that. part. It's so hard. That's why I you know. go to a clinic. Yes, yeah. Oh, okay. I okay, did okay. the same thing. Yeah, yeah. it's like I they, too. they want I went you... to a Planned Parenthood. Oh, okay. Oh, really? yeah. Which yeah. they gave me the same kind of like weird, like mm -hmm. they almost were like trying to get me to not keep him. What? Ooh. Oh, absolutely. Wow. Yeah. And my mom was there with me. I'm like, I have a support yeah. system. Huh. This like, place was the opposite. It was oh, okay, a Christian good, based good. place. So and it wasn't like, like that. Okay. They're like, you're not planning on like, you know, aborting it, are you? And I'm like, what are you talking about? It's like, my boyfriend's sitting over there. I'm excited. We're excited. Like, where is all this coming so from? So was the weirdness that you were feeling like they weren't sure if the pregnancy was going well? Or? Yeah. Because okay, when okay, she, okay. so I was laying on the table and she, you know, I just felt weird too because I hadn't really had many symptoms. Yeah. Um, I didn't have any morning sickness. Yeah. And so when I. When they say the sicker you are. The yeah, better. Right? In well, the beginning. this. <laughs> yeah, but they say it's really good for the baby. Like when you're really sick, it means that the baby's really healthy. So it could be a bad sign if you're not sick. But I never got sick, and I'm full time. And I know plenty of people yeah. haven't been sick either. But yeah. yeah. Anyway, so it sounds like there it could be you know all over the place. But um, I just like thought that that was kind of bizarre, and I I don't know why, but I just started googling like can you have a miscarriage without knowing about it? And that's when I figured out what a missed miscarriage was. And this was before I even went in. Or no. No, it was after I went in. That's why I yeah. started. That's why I was having the weird feeling. That's it. Because um, it was like she had the, um, I don't know what it's called, that thing that they stick up you so that they can see the heartbeat and stuff. Yeah. Because if she, they can't do an ultrasound like on your stomach and yeah. get the reading they need to, then they have to do it vaginally. Right. So they did that. And then they measured the fetus. And they said, oh, you're about you know, six or seven weeks. I'm like, that's really weird because I'm supposed to be like nine weeks right now or eight mm -hmm. weeks. Cause I was actually in Mexico and I was going to wait. So I made the appointment. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, by the time I get, you know, go to the appointment, I will be like eight or nine weeks or whatever. Or so I thought, cause I knew exactly yeah. the day that it happened when we, you know, had sex. So I, they yeah. said that they didn't think they could see a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. And then another nurse came in. Right away. She said, oh, I don't know, but I'm, it's probably fine. And she just literally had that thing up there for like 15 minutes, just searching around, not saying anything to me. So mm -hmm. I was like, what is going on? Can someone tell me? I was getting like just super anxious and like upset. And I was like, like, they don't want to tell long you. Between yeah. like you taking a pregnancy test and you in this appointment, how long was the time period? Like, Two weeks. Oh, okay. So you were sitting there two weeks, like, I'm pregnant, like... Yeah, I went to excited, Mexico, like, didn't really drink, like, I, like, mm -hmm. you know, I was 
I was eating really well. I was on my prenatal vitamins. Like I was like, yeah, we're doing this. Yeah. Like yes. I'm growing a baby. I'm going to do it the best I can. Yeah. Wait, can I throw it out there? I love that you went to Mexico because they like <laughs> terrify you into like this whole Zika virus oh, thing. Is that still a thing? Oh. Okay, no, I'm, I'm just going to throw it out there. So pregnant women, listen up. Like <laughs> we both went to Mexico. There is zero active cases in the entire world right now of Zika virus. Oh. So you can go on and like see like where they've had Zika, where it's been the most prominent, but there is no active cases in the world right now. And they're still like, do not travel to Mexico if you're pregnant I never heard or that. if you're trying to get pregnant. It's the first time. Hearing okay. That. Yeah, I didn't they know like about that. I terrify you into it. Our baby moon, we went to Cancun. I knew another pregnant woman who was like seven months pregnant, went to Cancun. I don't want to sit here and be like, it's fine. Oh, and then like someone come back and be like, you told me it's fine. But like, just do your research and don't be afraid. Like Zika virus isn't yeah, a do, crazy thing right now. <laughs> do your research for sure. Yeah. yeah so I, I did know that like going to Mexico um, and I was careful with certain things that I ate. Like I didn't eat from like a little, you know, shack on the side of the road or right. anything. But I, you know, so I, yeah, she was like, had another nurse come in or whatever or RN or whatever. And she was like, yeah, I don't know if I see anything. And then they measured something, but the chick kept moving her hand because she was older and like she kept thinking that was maybe a heartbeat, like how she like was moving the oh, thing. Oh, yeah. And I almost was gonna be like, do you want me to hold that for you? Like, I'll just <laughs> hold that in there so that you can do your job. Um, and so she just like, it's like they didn't want to tell me or something. So then mm -hmm. I finally made an appointment. Be sure. Yeah. So my gynecologist doesn't do prenatal at all. She stopped doing that because it's a different like type of insurance or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I've waited another week or something like that to get in. And then she said the same thing. She's like, your sac or whatever, yeah. the with the amniotic fluids and stuff is too is really big compared to how big the fetus is. And she's like, that tells me that there's nothing here. It's it stopped progressing. Mm, stopped growing. And she's like, your fetus measures six weeks, so yeah. it stopped progressing at like six weeks. Mm -hmm. And it was super sad. And then I just felt like I just wanted to like give my body another week to see if it mm. would, you know, reject it naturally. And then. I would say, like, after five days or something like that, Nick and I were talking, and we were like, do we want to, like, try again right away? Like, what are we going to do? And he was like, yeah, let's do it. And so I was like, all right, well, I'm just going to go and ha go and have the DNC then and get this thing over with so we can, you know, move on. Um, but and I didn't think that, like, I always, you know, heard about people having miscarriages. It's like, how could you be so sad about something that you never met or, like, you know, whatever? But it's, mm. it is. And so I went into, yeah. like, a little bit of a depression after that. And my emotions were already all over the place, mm -hmm. you know, pregnancy. So I mean, you were with us for a few days during all that, right? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah I was in here yeah. getting my hair done. Yeah, that's right. And oh, you know, no, I mean, in Palm Springs. Oh, Palm Springs. Yeah. 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 yeah I was. I was. I was shocked you were there. Honestly. When I was in here, I thought. Like, I was damn girl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was. Yeah. Uh, that was. You know, sometimes I feel like you need to like let Distract. yourself feel the emotions, but you yeah. also need to distract yourself at the same time. I yeah. think there's a happy balance of yeah. like both because if you just like hide it, it's, I don't think that's good for you. You need to like yeah. experience and mm. mourn and like do it the way yeah. your body's going to do it. But there's no right way to do it. Yeah. Like I said before in my video, I was like, don't feel bad if you don't feel bad enough or if you t right. feel really sad, like there's or no right. Or if you right. feel relieved. Mm. Yeah. And there's that's, no right. Yeah. That's a part of my journey that I honestly haven't really shared, Yeah, but I'd be lying if I said yes. Was I devastated? Absolutely. Like, did I cry? And do I still sometimes, like, think about that baby cry? Absolutely. But we weren't trying. We weren't even a year married yet. And I wasn't yeah. wanting a baby at that time in my life. And so, like, there was a part of me that was, like, relieved. But then you feel guilty about that, too. And I feel like that's something that women don't talk about is, like, that's also okay. That Like, not that you're happy yeah. that this child is, like, dead, but that you're, like... Okay, it just it wasn't the right timing. You're accepting what happened. You're yeah. like, okay, I'm at peace with this and everything happens yeah. for a reason and mm -hmm. I truly believe that. Like maybe there would have been something worse that would have happened down the line with yeah. childbirth or who knows, you know, mm -hmm. what happened. But, you know, I think everything happens for a reason and you know, you had you did I've heard of people doing a pill for, you know, a miscarriage and I didn't even have that option. I wasn't even given mm -hmm. that option. Yeah. So, so. Well, I was gonna, I was gonna ask because I'm, the first time I've ever heard of mis miscarriage was from you. Someone like, else said oh, that. Really? Never too. heard of that. So does that mean that you have the, the process 
And so it never happens on its own? Or does that yeah. mean like it never would have happened on its own and you needed to do that? You or... just don't have a bloody mess that tells you that you had yeah. a miscarriage. That's uh -huh. how women know that they've had a miscarriage. You have mistaken. to have that happen in order, like, because you can get sick, right? Like, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. you can go like septic or something. Yeah, yeah. So I think, um, you know, the media and Hollywood, they dramatize it and it's like you wake up in the middle of the night and there's like this huge blood stain in your bed right. and that can happen. Absolutely. That's, that's your body getting rid of it. Right. That's, it's a period. Your body's getting rid of it. That's a miscarriage. But what happened to Kristen and I, we both had miss miscarriages, which means that our body still thought it was pregnant and it wasn't getting rid of it. Mm -hmm. So we didn't have this big mm -hmm. bloody mess. We went to the doctor and the doctor had to tell us the fetus is not growing. There's no heartbeat. There's no heartbeat. Yeah, and so, um, so it's just different, and, and you, they instantly, I, I, you know, the medical profession, it's nothing against them, like, they, I don't want to say are desensitized to it, but they've seen it a lot, and their job is to they protect are. you, you know, as the patient, and so, um, my OB just instantly went into, like, okay, so here are your options, like, I literally just found out yeah, that my- like a mo you like, <laughs> you need a minute, that's why yes. I took a week, I was like, I need a, she's like, do you want to schedule it right now? I was like, no, like, I need a week to, like- figure this out and let my body kind of yeah. do it. Well, they instantly go, like, she went into the options. Like, okay, so you can either, um, you know, you can let it happen naturally. Um, you can do a DNC procedure, which, I mean, it's a nice term. It's an abortion. It's the same. It's what the does same. DNC stand for? I forgot. I looked it up and I totally Google forget it. Too. It's like dilate and something. We should look it up and see what it means. Some, yeah. But it, um, oh, Jenna's like, oh, <laughs> I can't lean forward right now, so. <laughs> Fair enough, I mean. I got you. Um, but yeah, so it's it's literally the same procedure as an abortion, um, or there's also the pill, so that's what you're talking about, um, and the pill is, it's not a nice term, they call it the abortion pill. It basically is a, if you know what um, Pitocin is, um, which is something that they induce labor for women, um, it's that basically, twice. yeah, mm -hmm. it's a low dose of that. It causes your uterus to start to contract, um, so... For I don't think this is it. Democratic National Committee. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think that's what it is. I think it's a D. That's a and different episode. C. Oh, D and C. Not I think it's D a D and C. Wait, we're two women who oh. had miscarriages and we're like <laughs> pronouncing it wrong. Hey, you know what? I'm if not a you doctor. both do, then there are people out there that do too. So, so let's find uh, yeah. D and C. Dilation. You could just say and what does D and C mean, and then do a plus sign. Hey Siri. Dilation and curatage. Yeah, it's weird. It. I'll send it to your iPhone. Oh, okay. Siri just to. listened to it. Uh, dilation that and the government. curatage refers to the dilation of the cervix and surgical removal of part of the lining of the uterus and or contents of the uterus by scraping and scooping. Ugh. Yeah, just that term. Having so, scraped. you wanted to know, now you know. Yeah. Well, so, there you wow, go. So, she started telling you right away, and so you can take a pill. They didn't talk to me about a pill at all. It was just like, hey, you're going to go under and have a DNC. And I was like, I have to be under for this? Like, you don't have to. You can, you can be awake. I asked. I wouldn't want to, but you can. Wait, but did you? I didn't do it. Oh, DNC. you did the pill. That's right, and you didn't know that that was an option. Well, I, I'll get to my yeah, whole story. Yeah. yeah, I didn't know the DNC, or I didn't. I didn't know the pill was an option. So I, yeah, I didn't. Yeah, they with me basically like their whole fear is you can your body can start to like reject the fetus and it can cause an infection and you can right. go septic yeah, and. Yeah. Um, and sepsis is very serious. Like I, I know someone's father who passed away of sepsis, you know, so they're concerned about you. So the medical professionals usually just want you to get a DNC, like remove it so that you're good. There's no harm, no foul, you know? Yeah. Um, I happen to know someone who very extreme cases on both ends of the spectrum. I know someone who had a DNC and started like hemorrhaging afterwards and had complications in birth because there are risks involved with that you are scraping the inside of your uterus there can they can scratch it puncture it like and it can cause issues for the I, future I had a friend that had a DNC and they didn't get it all the way out and yes she, months that, later yep. she was having issues and she was like what the hell and they didn't get it out well part of it was it was not quite in her uterus it was like in her fallopian tubes I think oh, or it was it had implanted a topical some, or something yes, that's what it's a called topic or yeah yeah something like that so she she had one hell of a time with it yeah that's but, I have a crazy story about a topical pregnancy my sister was oh yeah that's oh, right gosh. yeah that's a whole other story but like oh, no. my sister is like this miracle child because 
she was in the fallopian tube and then they're like all of a sudden she wasn't and she was it's a total miracle but yeah <laughs> oh Anyways, my gosh that's a side note um yeah but then i also knew someone who chose not to get a dnc and wanted it to just happen naturally and it did but it didn't happen all the way kind of uh, like you said like it didn't that not everything came out so she ended up having to do that anyway well she ended up getting septic oh, and she oh, like no. got a fever had to go to the er like I it was swear. really scary the things we have to go through as women I mean, it's... Right? It's, they leave it to us because men wouldn't be able to handle no, it. No, <laughs> absolutely not. It's endless. There's just... Ugh. Yeah, so for me, I was, like, just kind of scared because I knew really extreme cases on both, on both sides. sides. So yeah. I didn't... I just wanted it to happen naturally. Like an impossible decision. Yeah, but every yeah. day that went by, like, the doctors were like, okay, you need to do it. Like, you're going to get sick. You need to, like... I started, like, taking my temperature, making sure I wasn't, like, going septic. It was right around our one-year anniversary. And ugh. I was like... I don't want to go and get a DNC and get my uterus scraped out and then go on my one year anniversary and like, you know, and so we decided to postpone it. And, um, it's funny how we were talking about in the last episode, like going into labor, how you have to be relaxed and, you know, in that, that parasympathetic nerve system or whatever. Um, because I was actually leaving my old job. I was at this salon for like six, seven years and I was leaving there and it was my last day there and I was supposed to get a DNC it was going to be the day after Thanksgiving and I was leaving that salon the week of Thanksgiving um my very last day there it was like Uh. almost like I was like relieved to like be leaving there um not that it was like a bad salon I loved it but um but yeah I woke up that morning my very last day of work and I started you know essentially having my period and having the miscarriage and I remember telling Andy, and he was like, are you going to go to work? I'm like, I don't really have a choice. So I just put on some really good-looking underwear and pad. I'm like, I'm sick. I'm not coming in. Yeah. And so I started the new salon, and I was still for days, like, just doing... Mine was really brutal. See, one thing I didn't touch on in there, like, my doctor told me, oh, you'll have, like, a little bit of spotting. No. I had clumps Whoops. I had like clumps of blood and clumps of stuff coming out. I would say four good ones. Like I would, I like pulled down my underwear, not to be graphic, but like just so people listening, like if you've not had one or, yeah, know what to expect. Like it can happen. It's not, everyone's totally different, but like I pulled down my underwear and like a chunk of like bloody mass, like landed on my toilet seat and Mm. it looked like an, like not a, I couldn't see a feet. I'm not saying I could see that. Just, just cells and like blood and stuff. I've heard that before actually. Yeah. It was, it was weird. Um, yeah, so that's that. I didn't expect that. I yeah. expected just light. Like I, I Nick had to go in and get like pads for me, mm. and I was like, these aren't big enough. But thank you for trying. Aww, yeah. <laughs> I had to put two. Like I attached them like that on my underwear. So it was like up the back, up the front. Um, How long did that go on for? About five days okay. or something. Mm. Yeah, and they tell you to keep an eye on it. I'm like, well, what's too much blood? Yeah, like, what are you keeping an eye on? I know. Yeah. So I just kind of based it on like how many I went through and Nick was looking to he's like oh you went through like half the bag okay we'll keep an eye on that it was so cute he was mm-hmm. like keeping an eye on it for me um but yeah like what about yours what how is that um well okay so I I really didn't get into the whole pill thing because yeah. I did do the pill so I actually had scheduled a DNC um before obviously I started it happened naturally I scheduled a DNC and we went to the hospital and I've just never had any kind of procedure done before. I've never been put under. I didn't want to be awake during it. So um, I was in the hospital. They had, you know, the IV hooked up to me. I was in the bed. Um, and the anesthesiologist came and started, like, talking to me. And my OB came, and she could tell that I was just, like, really nervous. And Like, as anyone would be. Right. Absolutely. And I just wasn't really sure. And I, I really... I really appreciate this OB because she sat and talked to me about the pill and she said well have you tried the pill yet and I said no I heard of it but like what is that and she explained to me it's a low dose Pitocin it'll it'll basically just happen at home um they say within 24 to 48 hours and you'll be able to pass it at home and so even though I was there hooked up and like ready to go she was like 
would you feel more comfortable doing that? And I sat there and I went back and forth. I'm like, I'm already here. Should I just do it? And it I shouldn't give you that information before you schedule the DNC. Right. I haven't even heard of the pill. Yeah. Until... Well, but what a great advocate for her. You know what yeah, I mean? Like, absolutely. Yeah. Really, like step up and be like, you know what? Screw these guys. Screw these not guys. Yeah. I'm not saying anything about the guys, but yeah. screw these doctors. Like, yeah. if you feel uncomfortable, woman to woman, like, hey, well, she you was can the one that didn't do the procedure, yeah. huh? Your OB. Or was she, she was yes. the one that was oh. she was. Well, yeah. And it, what's funny is she was just like on call that night. You got whoever. And I loved and appreciated her so much that, like, full circle, like, she's been my OB for nice. this little one. That's Aww. so funny, too, yeah. because I was literally just saying that the girl who did mine, I wanted to be mine for my pregnancy when I'm Oh, half, yeah. Like, that's so crazy, because I really liked the one that I had, too. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. Yeah, so she, yeah, she was great, and so I ended up leaving the hospital, didn't get the procedure, went home with the pill, they give you one there, you have to take the second one, like, 24 hours later, um, and... Awesome that she did that for you. That's yes, I, I love her, I really appreciate that, so, um, so took the second pill 24 hours later, and it was, like, that evening, like, in the morning, I just my stomach, I felt like I had to go to the bathroom, so I, like, got up, and, and then it was, like, just horrible like cramping and like labor pains basically and I was like fetal position out on the couch and so I did start bleeding and it did pass but then what happened was I went to the doctor because they say okay we want to check you a few days later yeah so they did another ultrasound and they were like okay so you pass some but like it's still there like it it didn't take away all of it so now at this point your body has started the process and so now we need to get rid of it and so we're gonna move forward and actually do a DNC at this point and that's when it was the week of Thanksgiving it was my last week working and I was like can I get through the holiday in this last week of work and then I will I literally yeah. had my DNC scheduled for Black Friday uh, of 2019 that's rough yeah and so but then it happened naturally like in between that period so that's why I didn't have to mm. um, do the DNC so that's kind of my story and what happened. I still need to go in for my second one to make sure that everything's not in there, but I just had a period. Oh, yeah. So, so I should be you fine. should be fine. The, I just, yeah, they just feel like just nickel and dime you at the doctors, and so I was like, eh. And I had, yeah. the date I had, I could no longer make, and then they didn't have another one until, like, way far, and then I, now mm. I've had my period, so I didn't, you know. So, Jenna just said something interesting. She was like, someone asked, how can you be of support to someone that went through a miscarriage? And Jenna said, like, when she found out about mine, she was like, will you say it? You were just saying it. Well, I just wrote something real quick. I was just like, you know, you're my thoughts, love, prayers, you know, all that. But, you know, she responded, and then I was like, I feel like I need to say more. So I went through, and I would, like, text something out, and then i delete it. And then I would text it, and then i delete it. So I didn't know how to be there for you or to support you or to stay away and give you your space yeah. or you Everyone's know so different I think yes. like yeah. for me I think the most comforting thing that people were able to tell me was like I'm really sorry you're gonna be an amazing mom and I knew someone who had one and was pregnant within like three weeks after yeah and knowing that I could because when you, it happens I feel like I felt like I was a little bit of a failure as a woman I was like mm -hmm. am I not I just am not like I just felt like I wasn't able to carry a baby the way that you should I think especially to. with the missed miscarriage you're like okay my body already didn't do what it was supposed to do and then now it didn't do it again like it's supposed to get rid of it naturally on its own and it couldn't even freaking do that yeah you're frustrated yeah. with your own body <laughs> yeah totally and then you know and then I felt guilty for feeling that because I was like there's women out there who can't even get pregnant to begin with right, and then right. I was like okay check yourself like be yeah. grateful for what you have and what you can do and yeah. so it reminded me of that but like one thing that I don't get easily if I'm not easily offended at all and right. I could like care less but one thing that kind of bugged me that people did say and they meant well by it but it bothered me is they would say oh it wasn't the right time mm. I want to be pregnant right now it's the fucking right time you know I was just like don't tell yeah. me that so I don't know why that that one bugged me, but I did really love hearing that like you could get pregnant right away. And one thing I didn't know until people told me, so people listening like may not know this, but like after you have a miscarriage, you're like not more fertile, but you're more susceptible to having mm -hmm. um, a pregnancy, like a legit, I don't mean legitimate, but you know what I'm saying? What is the term they use? Full term? <laughs> not full term, but uh, like a, not a progressive pregnancy, but like a, um, I don't know. There's a term that they kept saying, like, <laughs> like a that, that's why they check you when you go to the doctor to make sure it's a blank pregnancy, and I can't huh. think of it. Viable. Viable. There we viable. go. Ah. 
That's so apparently you can get pregnant pretty quickly especially, after you have a DNC. So. Yeah, especially after DNCs because it's like a clean slate and then you're right. just like, hey. Right. So Clean up the house. Yeah, I don't know. See, that's a hard one for me because I actually felt differently when people said that to me because I really? felt like a lot of people um, – and you just, you can't hold it against them because they don't know what to say yeah. unless they've That's been through it. That's what I meant. It. I was like. Yeah, but like, I just remember someone, I, honest to God, I think it was my mom who was like, well, you'll get pregnant again. Like, it's fine. And it's like. You're like, what about the soul that I just exactly. lost? Exactly. It's like, yeah, that is true. But like, it's almost like, you know, not validating like the pregnancy that I just lost and the child that I just lost, you know, so it's hard. But I feel like there's a lot of things that people say that they try and just comfort you and it's like, oh, don't say that. Like, you know. I think checking in and asking how how you're doing. doing, Can I bring you anything? Can I get together with you? Because like, I was depressed for like a week. I didn't want to do anything. I didn't want to get out of bed. I just wanted to watch junk TV. And, you know, I think, I don't know. Yeah, there's certain things that... Are different for each person like if someone yeah. said something to me maybe it would feel differently yeah. if they said it to you but I think yeah. it was more so checking in for me and seeing like what they could yeah. do and so people kept saying give yourself grace mm-hmm. and that really stuck with me that's good yeah, yeah. I was like yeah. I just need to be like patient with myself yeah you know and that's good I think just seeing how like you said seeing how people are doing rather than trying to people want to relate but mm-hmm. sometimes be hearing like oh well I had a miscarriage or oh it's so common or oh it happens to everyone it's like that doesn't make it any better, no. you know? That doesn't make me feel good. So I think just being there and, like, I'm so sorry, I love you. Like, how can I be there for you? And not trying to, like, compare stories, you know, or right. hear about it. Um, I just feel like that doesn't help. And um, See, I liked comparing you stories. Did you? So I think, okay. see, that's it's just so different for everybody, I think, because, like, I was literally at um, this bar in Del Mar, and um, there was this older lady sitting next to me, and we started talking about it and she was like, Oh, I've had like three of them. And so, and it not, not that I would hope that someone would ha- go through three of those, but it made me feel better in a way mm-hmm. because I was like, wow, like you're here, you have four kids, but you went through three of them. Like, that's look the same at you. with my mom. Yeah. yeah. So it's not like I was happy to hear that she had them, but right. I was like, that's like comforting. And mm-hmm. it was nice to hear that it's so common for me personally. Cause I was like, okay, I'm not just like this fuck up. that can't grow a baby, right. you know? Um, so everyone's totally different. And I think like, how can I be there for you is a good, you know, a good one to answer this person's question. Yeah. Um, yeah. How you were saying, like, you just, like, were depressed for a week. I go into, like, fix it mode. And so I actually, I had a business meeting lined up right after my doctor's appointment. And I, I just, too. I and sucked I, it up and I went and I, I was canceled like, mine. Did you? Yeah. So is that's probably so what different. I should have done. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just very, you like, should have. I mean, yeah, I'm very, like, tough it out, put on a straight face. And it didn't, hit me, hit me for a couple of days. It actually was the same week as um, the one year anniversary of my dad passing. And so on his anniversary, I just, I remember being home. I'm like, I'm like the volcano. I like hold it in. So there's really no good answer. <laughs> no, I know. Exactly. Like, I feel like maybe even like day to day, like something could like trigger or cause. Oh, totally. How you were saying that, like hearing that you could get pregnant again so quickly, like helped you. And then I did have a friend who had a miscarriage and mm-hmm. she was like, the last thing I wanted to hear was people saying, oh, well, you'll have another one or yeah. you already have one. Like at least you have so-and-so or mm-hmm. whatever, where they're like, well, what about this one? Oh, that's like, weird. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel like maybe just like you said, like just saying I'm here for you yeah. and just maybe leaving it at that. Does that, I mean, it was would nice that have for, always felt good in your yeah, situations? Like, for me. And it was nice to like when my friends would check up on me, yeah. like a couple days later, Hey, how are you doing? Yeah. Like yeah. it was nice to know that someone was thinking about me, Yeah, you yeah. know? So that was, that was good. Maybe mm-hmm. that's just a safe, a safe call is I'm here for you or and, and checking in. I'm coming over and I'm bringing junk food. Sorry. Yeah. But I, you can't say no. I'll leave it at your doorstep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. Or yeah. we can come in and we'll watch some 90 yeah. day shitty, emotional, 90 day emotional fiance. Emotional binge together. Right. Yeah. Emotionally. <laughs> totally. Yeah. I'm going through some questions here, which is why I'm okay. holding my phone. Someone Perfect. said, um, dealing with the loss and disappointment. And the one thing for me personally that. I helped me through it was every, I believe that everything happens for a reason and God has control Mm -hmm. on everything. And so I was like, maybe that was the only thing I could think of. I was like, this is helping me through it because I know everything happens for a reason and Mm -hmm. this just wasn't meant to be for Mm -hmm. some reason. So what about for you for like dealing with a loss? Um, yeah, like I said, I'm a volcano. So I, I held it in, um, that 
the day that the anniversary of my dad passing, I just like, I lost it. It was a very low point in my life. Like I just couldn't handle it. And I just, blah, you know, on my husband, poor guy. But, um, yeah, a, uh, two years past the date. So I was actually pregnant and somewhat recently I went to this workshop and it was called like a uh, miracle baby workshop or something. And they talk about all things like pregnancy, labor, miscarriage, abortion. They talk about everything. And, um, I thought I was healed from the miscarriage and they, they talked about help. it and they said sometimes it's really helpful to um oh my I'm getting emotional to oh, name I got that. teary eyed a second ago too I know. You're, not, you're not alone it's okay we'll get you um, a tissue they say it's it's good to oh I'm good I'll be okay um they say it's good to name the child and to actually like almost like some women will like have a service or have a funeral or like you know I have a friend who did to rest and yeah um, I just, I was in that workshop and I just kind of closed my eyes and it was like, I just got this image of a little boy. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know why I just got this image of a little boy and Andy and I always said like our first son, his name would be Jackson. And mm -hmm. I just like pictured him and it was like, I just knew in my heart, like that was Jackson Andrew. And like, I haven't told this to anyone except for Andy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, oh <my> yeah. <laughs> and so I just like lost it, like in this room full of people, but I needed that to be like, that was him and you know as I'm, I'm a Christian and whatever people believe in that's fine but like I believe in heaven and so I believe that my child is in heaven with Jesus I believe that no matter how many weeks old it was it was a child it was a human it had a gender it had its own DNA and, and a soul yeah exactly you know and so so that I think um was I needed that healing and it was like two years later and I didn't even know I needed it yeah. so if that helps someone okay yeah. Okay. I, think that's a great, I think that's great advice. I have a friend who definitely did the same thing. Like, had, mm -hmm. like, buried... She, she, I won't share her story, because I don't know. But uh, she did, you know, bury yeah. what came mm -hmm. out, I guess. And, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's... Oh, it's so sad, but, you know, we're... We're on the other side of it. I mean, I feel like what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Right. Um, Absolutely. Someone said to speak about infertility because it's not talked about enough. Mm. Um, I don't, I can't speak to that because I, I have not experienced mm. it. Um, yeah. I wonder what she means. Like, I don't know what she means particular. about, maybe it's, uh, maybe she can elaborate on that, but I unfortunately just don't have any experience with that. So I can't really speak to how I feel about it or anything. It's horrible. Yeah. The only yeah. thing I could um, say is maybe like you were talking about how, um, some people are like, I don't understand how you can mourn the loss of, you know, something that you never had. But I think the same thing goes for mm. infertility. It's like they never had that, right? So it's kind and they'll of never the, get to the, right. So it's kind yeah, of the same. The I mean, part. people can mourn not being able to have a baby oh, just as much as not ever, yeah. you know, fulfilling the pregnancy. So. Yeah, one thing that would that's be horrible. been yeah. hard and weird and different to navigate through, and I don't have an answer for it, is like either mourning your. Um, miscarriage and or just being pregnant and being able to celebrate that and being around people that are not you know they're infertile they can't have kids for whatever reason because there's so many different reasons out there and I actually have a family member that she can't have kids mm -hmm. and she wants to like so bad mm -hmm. and it's, it's it's a shame it's really sad yeah it's hard because I I feel guilty now like being pregnant right. like around right. her and it's like what do you say? What do you, you know, maybe that is something we need to have someone on here to talk about that. Cause yeah. just like, yeah. what do you say about a miscarriage? Well, what do you say to someone like right. who my, can't have kids? My cousin's like, 40, yeah. I think she's 47 and she, this woman was supposed to be a mother her entire life and mm -hmm. she just recently adopted a baby. Aww. So first one, she's going to have more, but I'm his godmother. <laughs> so I'm all excited. We've been waiting for her to have a baby, but yeah, That's 47 so awesome. can't, you know, she, she always wanted a baby. That was her dream. Mm -hmm. Super entrepreneurial, super like driven, spent her whole mm -hmm. life career. And now, you know, so she has this baby now. So, you know, you, it, infertility is awful. And that, yeah. I can't even imagine, but there is, there is joy mm -hmm. in every situation and you can yeah. find that in some way, shape or form. Now she's been able to adopt. She has this save. beautiful baby boy yeah. now and you know, mm -hmm. and now it's just, and this baby would have not had the life that he's going to have. Yeah. If it weren't for Absolutely. Her. You know what I mean? So it's just two souls finding each other. Yeah. That's, so. that's really cool. Yeah. yeah I mean, uh, one thing personally that I was going to touch on too, that I just thought of that was hard for me is that so... If you know, if you're a fan of mine and you've been on here for a little while, you probably know what I'm going to say, but um, one of the reasons my ex-husband and I separated is because he didn't want kids. Mm -hmm. And he 
his girlfriend gave birth to their child the day after my DNC. Oh, that stings. That's yeah. yeah. That was rough. I was like That's on Instagram. Nice. I was like, oh, cool. You didn't even want kids. Here you are with a girl yeah. that you hardly even know having one. <laughs> yeah. Good for you, buddy. <laughs> I mean, I I love Ryan. But that was difficult. Absolutely. I was like, wow, okay. Mm-hmm. Any girl would be lying if she said that it wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> we can be very tough, but we're not that tough. Yeah. No. Nope. Nope. Let's see. Um, another one was asking about what they can do as a bystander. I think we kind of went over yeah. that. Someone said, did you do Offer experience? junk food. Yeah, <laughs> junk food. Junk food and 90 Day Fiance. Yeah. And if um, they like to drink, then just bring them a freaking glass of wine or a bottle or a shot of tequila. Are you allowed to while you're, while you're, is that okay? Again, I don't yeah, know because I've never been yeah, through it. I mean, so yeah, can you drink while you're going through? The f- yeah, okay, I did. Cool. Yeah, I mean, you want to make sure that it is not a viable pregnancy. And of course. That, you oh, know. No, I'm just thinking because, like, if your body's trying to, I don't know. I was just thinking, like, health-wise, if you're trying to, like, I mean, if you're trying to get pregnant again, you probably shouldn't, like, yeah. you know, just get shit faced or, but, you know, I <laughs> oh, had no, some I mean, rose. just like your body trying to, like, get everything mm-hmm. out, would, like, drinking get in the way of that? Oh, that's a question for a doctor. I have no yeah. idea. Yeah. Okay. I drank. We went to. I didn't to, give a shit. I was okay. like, I we went to pass a glass of wine. Yeah, we went to pass the Robles for our yeah. one year anniversary. And so, and I was still pregnant, but not with a viable right. fetus. And so, I, I, yeah, I was drinking. I needed the alcohol at that point. Yeah, I think plenty of people drink a little bit while they're pregnant. Yeah, anyway, so. it's, it's not a healthy coping mechanism. No, but, but, like, <laughs> but it works. I mean, everything in moderation, right? Absolutely. So I, I had rosé and stuff. I was like, I'm having a really rough day. I think I even had a shot yeah. of tequila in there. Yeah. At some point. There you go. Um, after the DNC, of course. Yeah. Here's a really good question. Um, does having a miscarriage make you want slash need a baby more than before? Hmm. Mm, for me, no. Um. Like I shared, we I had just taken out my IUD because I wanted to not be on any hormones. I wanted my body to just be natural. We weren't trying. We weren't even a, ma- a year married yet. And so we always wanted kids. And we said like two to three years into our marriage, but we were not actively trying. Um, that's another thing. Side note, like squirrel, um, that, <laughs> squirrel. well, how you said that, like you can get, um, you're really fertile after having a DNC. You're also really fertile after you get off of birth control or is, is specifically mm. IUDs when you take them out. No one told me that. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I didn't know that until right now. I have a friend now. who got pregnant with an IUD. Yeah. yeah. I, I've heard of that. Yeah. So, I have a yeah. client who you know. kept the IUD and got pregnant, kept it in the whole pregnancy and like has her child and he's like Wait, in his forties now. So this was like a long time. Yeah. Wow. Right? So, I mean, it's kind of crazy. So if you get pregnant with an IUD, if you want to, you don't have to take the IUD out. I, I don't know. Not a medical professional, but just saying. <laughs> We're not giving medical if advice. You, no, 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 if you, no you know, advice. decide to take out an IUD, just know um, you can, you instantly start to ovulate. And we didn't know that. Uh, three weeks and two days later is when I found out I was pregnant. So I like instantly got oh, wow. pregnant and was not trying to go there. Um, but so, anyway, so with that being said, it, it made me realize I want kids. I didn't, I, we, Andy and I were just not at a place where we were ready for that. We were going to take it on cause that, it was our responsibility. Like we yeah. did that, but, right. um, but yeah, so for us, it wasn't like we didn't feel the need to like, oh, okay, let's try again right away. It was, you know, a year, year and a half later that we weren't trying, but we weren't trying, we weren't not trying. So yeah. that, that was our journey. Yeah. But I don't know about for you. Um, I, so I had already wrapped my whole head around it. I was mm-hmm. in Mexico buying like baby stuff. I was like mm-hmm. my whole Pinterest board today still is just full of baby stuff. So yeah. I'm still Pinteresting, you know, obviously. <laughs> um, but no, it, after that I was like, okay, when can I start again? Yeah. When yeah. can we, I was like, I knew I was like, okay, I'm 30. And then I also started doing the math in my head. I was like, okay, (laughs) I don't want to be in my forties having kids. Me personally, there's nothing wrong with it. Me personally, I don't want to be popping kids out my forties. And so, you know, I want to enjoy, be enjoying my life with older kids at that point. So I was doing the math and I was like, well, shit, I'm 30, I'm turning 33 this year. I don't want to have kids back to back. I may want three or four, probably two or three. And so I started doing the math and I was like, well, I need to, I need to get going on this. And (laughs) also it could take me a while to get pregnant. Like who knows how long it could take. It could take me a year, year and a half. And so, yeah, I would say after I, it, it 
definitely did make me want to get pregnant quickly yeah. after. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, um, let's do this. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, uh, my Pinterest board is still just full of kid stuff and <laughs> you know, and here we are. Yeah. So one thing I will say that just to, I don't know, offer advice or like warn you is like, um, people don't really talk about like when you have had a miscarriage and then you get pregnant again, it like, it just sucks so bad because it's like, it steals your joy mm -hmm. away from like the excitement of being pregnant. Cause then you're in the back of your mind you're like, yeah. is you this going to happen? Well, you I was very hesitant, that. a yeah. little worried at first. And yeah. I remember it was like a daily Jenna, thing. Jenna, you're like, one of the first people to know. I know. <laughs> Cause well, I was like. It, well, mostly because every month she's like, I think I'm pregnant. <laughs> Well, because we weren't using protection. We were like, right. I was like, like, yeah, I'm probably I don't pregnant. know. I just think I'm pregnant. I don't know. I'm just, oh one of these times it's going to be right. But that's it was. But yeah, it was, it was rough for you at first. Like, I saw she wasn't able to fully, like, accept it and, like, be excited about mm -hmm. it because you were so nervous that it would happen again. Yeah. And, like, telling yeah. people, too, yeah. because yes. uh, there is no right or wrong, like, when you want to tell people. Because we told people our first pregnancy, like, right away, we told mm -hmm. people. And, went through the miscarriage and for us we don't regret that because those people were able to be there for us um whereas I did have someone who I love her and she did come back and apologize afterwards which I'm very she says thankful I'm bitchy. what was it but um <laughs> where she lived. it was a family member <laughs> who who when I when we did announce that we were pregnant again we announced it at Thanksgiving and I was probably like four or five Ew. weeks pregnant with Jensen she's like don't you want to wait a while or something? and she she her response was like oh like why are you telling people like what you know and uh, way to that's how not to support yeah. someone that's had a miscarriage yeah and like I said like she came back and she was like I was such an a-hole like I'm so I'm sorry and like that. gave me a prize and I I love her and I don't hold it against her like I really don't like no she yeah you have it, to forgive people yeah it happens you know um but so it's just it's like people are like oh like don't tell anyone yet until you're out, out of your first trimester it's like no if you want to tell people because guess what that is still a child. It is still a baby. And if you want to celebrate that, then celebrate it. Celebrate that your body, you were able to get pregnant. You created life. It's okay to celebrate that, even if it doesn't come to fruition at the end. Like, you know, and I think so many people kind of get shamed for, like, <clears throat> like telling people before their first trimester is over or, you know. And if you want to wait, then wait, you know. Um, we decided we weren't going to let the fear of another miscarriage stop us from celebrating in we did create another life, and so we decided, like, we're going to tell people right away again. Because I was like, I don't know. That's not what I would do, too. And, you know, the thing is, like, there's so many people that can relate to what you went through. So, like, I told Nick, I was like, when I'm pregnant again, I'll, I'll like, tell everyone right away. And yeah. I'll announce it online right away. Because, like, it is a life. And I'm going to be talking about going through another miscarriage if, if I happen happens. to have one. Yeah. I'm not going to hide it. I'm not going to, like, hide behind, like, this stigma, like, you can't talk about, you know, miscarriage and, like, you shouldn't say too too soon, like, I'll do whatever the fuck I want. Like, yeah. if I want to tell you when I'm six weeks, I will. And, like, if you want to shame you for it, I yeah. mean, you can fuck right off. Yeah. <laughs> so, honestly, like, I love that you guys did that. Mm -hmm. I think that's great. Nice. I mean, yeah. that's... There's no, like you said, there's no right or wrong, like, how you go about it. It's just really between you and your partner, whoever that is, and right. you guys making that decision together you know exactly exactly so. it's you know definitely up up to everyone individually and as as a couple you know mm -hmm. how they feel together so yeah. i think that's good yeah um what do you have any other questions yeah and there it's was something 4 30 fyi oh it is i'm yeah. supposed to meet with my doula soon y'all uh, yeah speaking, <laughs> of, speaking so of apparently this was a good topic i know right I knew I had a feeling we still I could still continue talking about it because I just like want to be able to be like supportive you yeah. know, through a mic to, you know to people that are and going I through guarantee it. you after like if you were to just do this and let this go there's gonna be a lot more questions yeah and so I know we could do another one yeah yeah like well, a I know I know like yeah. off the mic Jenna you were like asking about like the abortion pill and like mm -hmm. um you know people that aren't like pro-abortion like you know like how do you feel about that and the pill and just kind of the controversy behind that like I feel yeah, like if you had any yeah if you had any um oh they're can of worms to yeah, talk about exactly. yeah <laughs> lots yeah, of talk definitely. about definitely no I think I think that's that's really good it was after I put my video out too someone was like I literally didn't know what a missed miscarriage was and yeah, I just no had clue. one like yesterday oh shoot and she's like I'm really glad that I watched your video and I was like me yeah. too and I felt so bad I even put a reminder on my calendar to like DM her like on the day of her DNC she was really upset about oh. it um and I feel like this is like 
you know, a huge part of, like, why we decided to do this podcast is, like, to just talk about things that people don't talk about, be there, support each other, like, it doesn't mean that we're always going to agree on things or have mm-hmm. the same views or opinions. Right. Or have the right answers. <laughs> right. But, yeah. like, that's okay. And it's just women supporting other women mm-hmm. and encouraging talking each other. Out. Yeah. Talking it out. So, I love yeah. that we did and this. And support and respect to other people that don't have your same views or Absolutely. opinions on things either. Mm-hmm. Oh, we disagree on some things. Some. <laughs> but yeah. we love and support each other at the end of the day, and that's all that matters. Right. right. That's what we as women are supposed to do. Exactly. That's what you as women are supposed to do. Just so. love, just love each other. <laughs> exactly. All right. Well, she's got to get to her doula appointment. Yeah. So. All right. Well, next appoint, uh, next appointment, next uh, podcast. We it's do. just gonna be the three of us. Yes, it's gonna well, be us. I know. <laughs> That's so crazy. To John say. Santa, can't wait to meet you. <laughs> Maybe that's your week. We might need to make Kristen. a little guest, guest appearance. I know. They're yeah. like, who's Jensen? Jensen David. That's crazy. Oh my gosh. That's yeah. so weird to think about. Uh, and you then gotta you guys, bring Jensen on here. Yeah. Okay, we'll bring Jensen. We'll on. have yeah. him open the next. The and next hopefully, episode. I have a great yeah. labor story to tell you. Oh my gosh! Oh, so good. 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 I hope it's good. We can go through labor stories. <laughs> oh, I uh, hope it's good. She won't video any of it though. I need some do's and don'ts. What my you. labor? Do you guys want to see? Me? I mean, I think it'd be funny <laughs> like for you to snippets. do a couple little clips. Okay. I'll while talk you're to sitting Andy. in there waiting. We'll make it We're PG. Not. Just no hoo ha in it. Yeah, no hoo ha. <laughs> we don't need to see the hoo ha. No. Might get more money on our fans only page. <laughs> Wait, or is it only fans? It's okay. I think no, I'm already showing the camera everyone my hoo ha. I've been like trying to make the sure. The mic is like right there. Oh, Wait, yeah, you're good. Like, there we go. I wanna, there I'm going to want to hear some do's and don'ts of like hospital stuff and like all that because like I'm going back and forth whether I want to mm. do a birth center or like a hospital. Oh, I'm learning all of that of stuff. It's a whole other world. That'll be fun because. Jenna's been through it twice. She's, a, you know, a super She's mom. A and she has a totally different story. I don't know what my story will be yet. I know what I want it to be, but... <laughs> yeah, my pregnancy sucked, but my labors were, like, in and out, like, done. Like, six hours, four hours, done. Oh, no. Oh, you were so, young. Your body probably, like, young. bounced back like that, too. So that'll be fun. Yeah. So maybe, like, if people... If you guys have questions about that, like, yes. labor birth, hospitals, drugs, I'm learning all of that, oh, and Jenna's yeah. been there, so we can... And I need to learn about it, so... <laughs> I have a feeling so that'll, that'll be, be a fun one. We promise that not, like, everything is going to be birth and moms yeah. and all that, you know? We will get to other things that more we'll people... We'll be birthing businesses, too. Just very... Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I better get to my dual yeah, appointment, girls. Okay. All right. Bye. 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 Bye.